Last week, I took you out hunting for the small Dharma wallaby, which is decimating forests and munching on pasture in the Bay of Plenty in parts of Waikato. Today, I'm taking you to a fence, which is among the tools being used to try and stop them from spreading beyond a 260,000 hectare containment area. The fence doesn't encircle the whole area, that'd be a mammoth task and expensive, but it's hoped natural barriers like rivers and lakes will also do the job. My name's Dale Williams, I'm a biosecurity officer with the Bay of Plenty Regional Council. Most of my work is on the wallaby programme, Tipu Matoro. We're standing by our wallaby proof fence, which runs um, along State Highway 5 for about 12 kilometres. It follows the highway and then it cuts inland to Lake Rota Kākahi, or the Green Lake. Um, so you can see the fence looks pretty much like a standard farm fence, um, though it's got netting, uh, which is quite tight at the bottom. It comes in and lays flat on the ground for 30 centimetres. And that's based on the fact that wallabies won't try to jump over a fence, they'll try to push through it or underneath it. There's still two reasonably large gaps where we had to wait for the um, timberlands to harvest their pine trees, so that's happened now. So our intention is to complete those two areas through the clear fell. Now what is the purpose of the fence? So there's a large number of wallabies north of State Highway 5 in Whakariwariwa Forest. Um, There are wallabies to the south of the fence, but many fewer. So by having the fence in place, it means that we can start controlling the wallabies outside of the fence, south of State Highway 5, and they won't be repopulated from wallabies from Whakariwariwa Forest. And how effective is it? What are you seeing? A couple of weeks ago, I was riding my e-bike along the fence, checking the integrity of the fence, and I managed to flush a wallaby out of the broom on the highway side of the fence. That wallaby ran in front of me for about two kilometres. I didn't put a huge amount of pressure on it because I wanted to just watch its behaviour, and several times it challenged the fence uh, by just banging into it at about knee height and then it would just continue along the fence. When it got to the far end where the fence cuts inland to the Green Lake, uh, Road to Kākehi, um, there's a standard farm fence coming down to the road and the wallaby went through that with barely slowing down so it, it shows you that they can push through a fairly small gap and hence the reason the netting is quite tight on the bottom of this fence. How are you monitoring the flow of of wallabies and the numbers within this area and outside? Where we are at the moment is inside our containment area. So one of our key goals is to stop wallabies expanding their current range. So wallabies that are outside of the containment area are our highest priority for control. So we're, we're not currently doing any control here but we want to do um, control in the Waikiti Valley, uh, Pairoa Range, which is south of us here. So that will enable us to do that work and not have them uh, repopulated from here. Ultimately the goal is elimination of wallabies from the Bay of Plenty and Waikato regions, but that's going to be years down the track. So at, at the moment, first priority, stop further spread. Second priority, to eliminate populations that are outside of the containment area, then we will start working from the outside edge, working inwards with the ultimate goal of eradication. And outside the fence, how's it going? What are you seeing? Yeah, we're, we're getting very good at reducing numbers to ones and twos, but it's getting those last few animals that's really quite tricky. And, it, and that's the same with any eradication operation. Um, it's often the last one or two animals that take a huge amount of effort and cost. We've spent a lot of time and effort on surveillance, working out where wallabies are, how far they have spread. We are gradually um, starting our control program. And what does the control involve? Our most effective control tool is um, 1080. Um, Any bait laid directly on the ground Um, and 1080 is one of the few pesticides that we are allowed to lay 
on the ground is really effective at controlling wallabies. But as you know, um, there's a lot of public concern about 1080, so getting that social licence to carry out those operations does take time um, and quite a lot of consultation effort goes into that. And what about shooting? Shooting's really effective on farmland. Recently there's been tools like um, night vision and thermal scopes. That's been a real game changer because animals who are exposed to shooting a lot, um, the survivors get what we call light shy. So they see a spotlight being flicked around the forest margin and they, they disappear. They go back into hiding pretty quickly. In your view, what are the challenges going forward? Do you think you will be able to eradicate the wallaby from this area and stop it spreading? Yeah, well, the challenges are we, we have very few tools. In the pesticide area, for instance, there's a large number of pesticides registered for rodents. There's a good number of pesticides registered for possums. We only have two pesticides registered for wallabies, and that's cyanide and 1080. So one of the downsides is that both those poisons are very effective, but they, they are fast-acting. They're what we call an acute pesticide. And the downside of those is that if an animal eats a sublethal dose, it's highly likely to remember what it's just eaten and become what we call bait shy. Cyanide's the worst for that and we've just um, done some research where we've um, recorded photographs of wallaby eating cyanide, collapsing, lying on the ground for 20 or 30 minutes and then sitting up and hopping away. So you can almost guarantee that those animals won't go near uh, the bait, a bait station, a lure at all. They'll remember that bad experience and stay away. 1080 is the next cab off the rank and one of the reasons we pre-feed acute poisons is to get animals over that hurdle, get them used to interacting with the bait, sampling the bait. Wallabies are very tentative feeders so they will just sample something before eating very much of it and then when they get used to it they'll try more. So that's why it's really important to pre-feed with non-toxic bait. Are you actually putting the poison in this area or is it only outside the fence? The Whakarewarewa forest is really high public use, so poisoning would be really difficult. Shooting may be an option, but people ride their bikes at all hours of day and night here, so for shooting in here you'd have to cordon off small areas and do compartments at a time. That would be effective at reducing numbers, but we will need to come up with a better plan when we're getting closer to eradication. You just recently discovered another species of wallaby here. Is that more of a threat than the Dharma? The Dharma wallabies have been present in the Bay of Plenty since 1912, so over 100 years, and they've spread to cover about 200,000 hectares because in the last um, two years we've figured out we have a another species of wallaby, the palmer wallaby. So they look very similar and they've also come to the Bay of Plenty from Kauai Island in the Hauraki Gulf. And you think, well, so what? You've got another wallaby, similar size, but their behaviour is quite different. They're solitary, they have no desire to come out of the forest to feed on pasture. As a result of that, they're much harder to shoot. And in terms of pesticides, we just don't know. Do you have any idea what proportion are Palmer? No, we don't, to be fair. Um, we think they were illegally liberated in the 1990s, and we think the liberation site was somewhere south of Lake Rotuiti. Around that area, they may be as high as 20 or 30 per cent of the population, but we, we have no idea how far they've dispersed. So now you've got this added problem, another species. What do you need to try and deal with the issue? I guess cooperation from from landowners. To achieve eradication, we need access to all land of all tenure. Initially, that will be access for our surveillance crews, so the dog handlers and the camera operators, so we can really learn where these animals are. The next thing is, I guess, some understanding around the control methods. There's a lot of public concern about the use of 1080. We are aware of that 
and we do our absolute best to explain um, I guess the pros and cons of those methods. It's a long project then? Yeah, I think I'll be long retired before we get close to <laughs> eradication. <laughs> I was speaking there to Dale Williams of the Bay of Plenty Regional Council. If you shoot a wallaby or see one dead or alive, you can do your bit for a wallaby-free Aotearoa by reporting it to reportwallabies.co.nz.